Can you get this Huli on the, the screen, this chart here? Yes, I can. It's, uh, and we want to talk about Joe's horoscope. We talked about it a couple of weeks ago, but there was a salient point that we left out. And uh, I thought about it. I thought about the one aspect in the horoscope that to me was, was stunning. And uh, we didn't talk about it. I want to talk about it tonight. One of the deep secrets. Can you get kind of where it's both me and the, and the chart? Can you do that? Yeah, I can. Okay. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. A couple of very significant things in his horoscope. He's got five planets in Scorpio, a stellium of planets in Scorpio. We talked about that several weeks ago. What we didn't talk about was we didn't talk about this aspect here, which is very important. And it also, it's on the distal cusp of the sixth house and therefore it has influence in the seventh house, which has long-term karma in Gemini retrograde. The significant thing to me that I thought about and was amplified on TV Monday afternoon in a congressional hearing in Washington, DC concerned this aspect in Joe's horoscope, exactly. One of the things that we learn in esoteric astrology is we learn about morphology of symbols. Very few people ever talk about this, but it's a key feature in understanding, especially esoteric astrology, but it should be all astrologies. When we look at Uranus or Uranus here with Gemini retrograde, it's telling us something. The entire horoscope is telling us something. One of the things that we learn in esoteric astrology is, is that this is a what we call a lingua sacra, it's a sacred language. And initiate beings are able to read these symbols and put them parsing, we call it, and put them into sentences actually make a sentence out of it. So we want to, we're concerned with Uranus and with Gemini retrograde in the sixth house. We're also concerned with Saturn, excuse me, Saturn in Gemini retrograde in the seventh house. It's the house of law, business, and partnerships. Mm. The thing that's interesting to me as a student of esoteric astrology is in the morphology of Uranus, we find the laptop computer. Can you just shine this? Put this camera over here on this computer. Mm -hmm. really. This symbol is aping this. It even has the mouse configuration. And so it's not a stretch to look at Uranus and see a computer, a laptop computer could be morphologically construed out of the, with a mouse, it's got a mouse. Remember the mouse, we used to have the wire and the mouse was hooked up, there it is. Uh -huh. And it controls electronic devices and inventions. And it's a fairly new discovery in astrology. And so it's telling us something about Joe's horoscope and a computer that is retrograde means it's not his computer. It's not Joe Biden's computer. It belongs to sixth house. It would it belongs to his son. 
something about his son's computer. And one of the most mind boggling things happened Monday when I'm watching this uh, a congressional investigation uh, uh, into uh, uh, Blinken and this terrible evacuation from Afghanistan that was just an abomination that one of the inquisitors, one of the congressmen who was asking questions, out of the clear blue sky, he said to Blinken, what do you know about the investigation that's going on into Hunter Biden's computer? into his laptop and he couldn't answer it. Couldn't, couldn't say because uh, he said, well, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an ongoing investigation. Well, who knew there was an investigation? So he admitted that there is an investigation going on in the Hunter's laptop. It's a very serious matter. And it karmically, it's gonna affect Joe, it's gonna affect Hunter too, but but the, the Gemini feature is the two of them. It's the father and the son. It's not a stretch because Gemini rules things that come in pairs. Would they say the chip off the old block, uh, things that are connected, similar relationships, father and the son, a mother and the daughter. So, I thought that it was noteworthy and it's, it's on the cusp here of the, the seventh house is Gemini. And Gem, one of the things that Gemini does is it splits and divides. And uh, it can also unite, but uh, in its malefic aspect, uh, it divides. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what comes out of this in the future. It's just a, an aspect that is, to me, is very powerful aspect for consideration because it involves long-term karma. There's a karmic link between Joe and his son, Hunter, some past life karma that is noteworthy. And it's telling us about it in his chart. I had a friend of brilliant, Theosophical friend was an artist, and uh, and he would always he would talk periodically about mandalas. It's not uncommon in theosophical lectures for people to talk about mandalas. Uh, we're all aware of what they are. The, most civilizations have some aspects or remnants of mandala. Uh, study symbolism, but this, this is Joe's mandala. Your horoscope is your mandala. If you wanted the ultimate mandala, you would cast the horoscope. It pertains to you. It's telling us something about you. It's telling us something about Joe Biden here and his son and a computer, a computer, the morphology of, of Uranus is a computer. And uh, it's not, like I said, it's not, it's not Joe's, it belongs to somebody else. My guess is it's Hunter's computer. And then when the guy talked about it on national television, the whole world was just stunned, you know? What, what about the FBI and what's what's going on with Hunter's computer? So we're going to keep that on the back burner and uh, we're going to uh, see what comes of it in the future. It could be a part of a, uh, uh, a continuation of this lecture and of the horoscope of Joe Biden. But when this came to mind, of course, I I immediately thought of my own horoscope and aspects that I have in my horoscope and how they pertain to me and how accurate it was in my life. And one of the aspects that I had in the first house, we may bring out my chart next, maybe next week, uh, but is 
Libra or Libra, as they say in America, and Neptune in the first house with Libra, Libra on the ascendant. <clears throat> When I was a young boy, I didn't know it at the time, but I was very powerfully influenced by these symbols, even into my adult life and, and now. The morphology of Libra is immense and it impacted my life in unimaginable ways. It had an esoteric uh, meaning, of course, as you would expect, and it had an exoteric meaning that was very powerful in my life. I never really got to the point of my soul's purpose until I was about 28 years old. And as far as the exoteric aspect of Neptune and Libra was concerned, it didn't fully manifest itself until I was about the age of 35. And here's the way it manifests itself. We say that this symbol is a very powerful symbol. They're all powerful symbols and that they have multiple meanings and that Libra morphologically is an automobile. It's even the wheel openings and the road. This could be designated the road and the automobile, which has tires, and in and of itself, it has a, some kind of a morphological shape that would ape Libra, it's aping the shape. And if you're gonna ever learn esoteric astrology or quantum, that some people are now beginning, very few on the planet, are beginning to be concerned with quantum astrology, you'll have to know this stuff. It's powerful. It's the highest modest the highest mental plane information that is available to mankind at this time. So when I was a young boy, also, uh, I'm gonna have to regress a little bit, go back a little bit. Um, I like to play pool. And this is like the pocket on a pool table. And Libra rules things that are flat, hopefully level. And the pool table is certainly all of that. And if you looked at the configuration of a pool table, it's a series of pockets, corner pockets. And it has a side pocket and another corner pocket down here. And that's a pool table. And it's all made up of these Libran symbols. I love to play pool. I also had an affinity for pole vaulting, which could again be designated as a Uranian or Uranian thing. Here's the pole and the pole vaulter goes over the, over the crossbar. And as a young kid, I was a champion pole vaulter in high school. And I love pole vaulting and I love pool, love playing pool. Met Minnesota Fats and Jimmy Karras when I was 15 years old. And uh, it, was, uh, it was quite an experience for a young kid. But that affected me in my youth. And they're all aspects of these signs that are in my horoscope. So as I grew up and eventually got a, a really a good job, I began, I was hired in a General Motors design center. Uh, and I, uh, I designed automobiles. And the, one of the symbols of the Libran or Libra symbol is the symbol of George Washington or Napoleon's hat. It's a general's hat. It's the general's hat. And it's a car. It's also a car. And it parses as Baker about fell out of his chair. 
General Motors. <laughs> oh, Neptune rules clay and cheese like things. And when I did at General Motors, I was a supervisor over a large group of people. Uh, we designed automobiles out of clay, out of plasticine clay, which really isn't clay like you dig out of the earth, but it's a, a, a form of a grease and it's cheese-like clay. It's a very synthetic kind of a clay and that's the way the automobiles are designed, both the interiors and the exteriors of the automobiles. So this was my exoteric job, E-X-O-T-E-R-I, my exoteric job. But my esoteric job, this is the clay down here, clay. Making automobiles out of clay for General Motors. And my esoteric job was, this is like the binding of a book. If you had a, a hard bound book, which I don't have access to right now, but you know what it is, let's say that this is a book. This is a hardback book. And this is the spine of the book. The spine of the book is this feature in, in, and this rules layers and laminations. And those are the pages of the book. If you turn it upside down, the book upside down. <clears throat> it's also the sun that is rising on the horizon or setting. In my case, it's the rising sun, which is the dawning of a new age, which esoterically interprets uh, uh, the interpretation is new age, new age books. Neptune rules the oceans of the world. But the majority of the surface of the world is water. Neptune rules the, the, uh, the oceans. And my job for many years in helping Dr. Baker in the uh, Claregate College in England was the mass distribution of esoteric books. So E-S-O-T-E-R-I, esoteric books. And I sold thousands of books for Dr. Baker through Amazon. When you used to order the books from Amazon, they came from my house. I worked my tail off, boxing books up, air books every day, every day, and mailing them out. Mm -hmm. And so here, this, this one symbol, this element of the first house in my horoscope points the direction as it does for all people. It points the direction to the soul's purpose. So my soul's purpose, esoterically, was the mass distribution of esoteric books all around the world and my exoteric interpretation of those same symbols was to design automobiles for General Motors. And it was the job at General Motors that helped me finance uh, my work with Baker and the esoteric books. I was able to send money to England, still do, uh, to uh, finance programs, the videos. Uh, we, I remember we did one uh, on the horoscope of John F. Kennedy Jr. It was a brilliant video. Uh, and I had uh, uh, produced it, raised the money to help pay for it. And that and a lot of other ones as well. But it's interesting how both the, the exoteric interpretation and the esoteric uh, interpretation are wedded together in my life. It's a perfect symbolism and a perfect explanation of esoteric astrology. So those are things that you have to remember that any, any of those signs 
Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, whatever your whatever your signs are, your rising sign is, there's a key, there's a clue. It's telling you something about your soul's purpose if it's on the horizon. The emphasis is on the ascendant, not on the sun sign. The sun sign is the personality. There is a huge difference between mundane astrology and esoteric astrology. This is the astrology for the 21st century. This and quantum are the astrologies for the Aquarian age. It's an incredible science. It really is a, a sacred science. And uh, it's uh, absolutely worth uh, investigating and discovering. Anybody have any questions here in the audience? No, I do. So when you said that um, about the Biden's chart you mm -hmm. said this because of the sixth house this mm -hmm. is not his computer it is his... it's retrograde it's not joe's computer it's, he, it's hunter's he, computer so but so does, what does sixth house means though why did you how did you come the, that the well the in, it's right there in the sixth house with taurus on the cusp of the sixth house the seventh house is in this case is influenced by Gemini, which splits and divides. This is the house of partnerships mm -hmm. and business and legal matters. Libra is the scales of justice. And there's something brewing there that I believe will come out. So what's the sixth house means then? It's, uh, uh, it involves uh, work, uh, dedication, uh, just a lot of things, uh, disciplines of, uh, of uh, uh, work ethic, to have a work ethic, to be of service in some way. Uh, the thing that touched me was the fact that it's on the distal cusp, which means it's influencing this. It's influencing this right here these two Gemini features, and this, of all things, long-term karma. And uh, I, I haven't, I have had the good fortune of being able to investigate past lives of certain people, which we'll talk about in the future. Um, one of them is a past life of Donald Trump. Another one is a past life of uh, Hillary Clinton. Extraordinary, extraordinary insights into both of their past lives and how they influenced this life. Each of their lives were atavistic. We call it atavism. Atavism is the influence of previous lives that were very powerfully uh, influenced the person and it carried over into this lifetime. And uh, that's what I see here in, in Joe's. There's some karmic thing with he and Trump. I haven't unraveled it yet, but my interest was is that it's relevant to what's going on in the world. That's the important thing. Everybody asks me, I get phone calls all the time. I get emails, I get Facebook messages from people all over, all over the world. And they want to know what the hell is going on. What's happening in the world? And of course, what's happening is, is that the Piscean age is dying and the age of Aquarius is being born. And it's a tumultuous time. Uh, any birthing, you know, the difficulties of birthing and dying can also be a difficult time. And we're at that point, we're at that midway point between death and rebirth 
in the birthing of the Aquarian age, plus the rays are changing. New rays are coming in, three, four, and seven. Third ray souls. I have people on uh, Facebook that are friends of mine who are third ray souls. And, and what is a characteristic of a third ray soul? Well, they, they love animals. They love animals in most cases more than they love human beings. So uh, a third ray soul is, uh, is a unique and a, and a relatively new thing in the world. They've always existed, but they're coming in in huge numbers. Fourth ray influence. The fourth ray is another energy that's coming in very powerfully. And you can turn on your TV and watch the news. And it's proof of the fourth ray because they're arguing about uh, states' rights versus federal rights. And that's a fourth ray thing. The fourth ray will bring city state government and decentralized government. That's what will destroy Washington, D.C. It's in the process right now of being destroyed. And uh, the fourth ray will do it. We call it harmony through conflict. I've said before, it's a good analogy. If you would have told somebody 75 or 80 years ago that the Germans and the Japanese within a few decades would become America's greatest allies, they would have probably institutionalized. Fourth ray, harmony through conflict. So we are now in harmony with Germany and with uh, Japan some of our greatest allies. And, uh, and there you go, uh, it's the way it works. And we'll see more of it in the future. The old story I told 10 years ago in an article in the Scientific American Magazine about blue flowers disappearing, they are, and will continue to do so. But uh, it brings in new things too, very positive things, new art forms. There's a lot of being a, a person with an artistic background, uh, which helped me get hired in the General Motors Design Center. Uh, it uh, is interesting to see people in, coming up with new art forms. I have a friend in Indiana. I didn't go to school with him, but I know him through other uh, people in college. And he does these gorgeous, pictures with just amazing detail of fabric. He cuts up fabric and he glues it on a board. And when he gets done, they look like paintings. They're just stunning works of art. He's got a big show up in Chicago this weekend. Uh, <coughs> extraordinary, new art form. That's what I'm talking about. The fourth ray brings in new art forms. What time have we got, Julia? It's 8.16, so we have about 15 more minutes. Okay, well, I'm open to questions. If anybody wants to ask any questions, both uh, on the Zoom meeting and uh, here in the, in the room. David, this is Angel. Hi, Angel. Hi, I just wanted to say I'm so enjoying this and I'm really happy that you brought up the blue flowers that are disappearing. That was something that I learned long ago and it has always stuck with me. So thank you, thank you for bringing that up because that really, really impacted me in how I see the world. Um, I wanted to just share that, you know, with the Piscinian age um, symbolizing authority going out with the seventh ray Aquarian age coming in of individual responsibility, we can see this clashing in our own society here, but also throughout the world with parents realizing as they take their students to public schools, what we're learning is about authoritarian language. Public schools means you turn your children over to the state. It is not good. So we are seeing the dismantling and the reorganization of uh, public or private education, as the case may be, um, public, uh, excuse me, private education, 
homeschooling for children coming just uh, rapidly to the surface as well. Mm -hmm. Parents realizing they can no longer be almost negligent with their children uh, really waking up. And, you know, people all over the world of all ages realizing they can no longer just, you know, be on autopilot and think that the quote government, which means governing the mental, <laughs> that we would turn that responsibility over to them and just assume they've got our highest good. You know, this, this is a wonderful thing that's happening, although it's very chaotic and it makes a lot of people afraid. Or the harmony through conflict, yeah. Yes. And we're going to usher in this new age of harmony through beauty, which means mm -hmm. divine order in esoteric terms. So yeah. this Seventh is a ray great is time. Order. Yeah. yeah, it's a great See, time. It's the combination of these rays that will be so powerful. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, very good. Yeah, it was interesting on the, the uh, blue flowers disappearing because uh, about a week before, two weeks before I gave a lecture uh, to a large number of people here in Michigan, um, there was an article in Scientific American magazine uh, where the scientists were unable to explain the disappearance of blue flowers all across the plants. They're still blue flowers, but they're diminished in numbers. And uh, I had a, a lovely lady that was in attendance lives up somewhere around uh, Grand Rapids and she came up to me after the lecture and said she was so thankful that I had brought up that point about blue flowers disappearing. It was a comment that Alice Bailey had made back in the 1930s or 40s. And she said that she had uh, planted these blue flowers I can't think what they were exactly, but some kind of a blue flower. And that over a three or four year period, each year the flowers diminished in their health until finally there wasn't anything. So it's not a figment of my imagination, nor is it a figment of, or was it a figment of Alice Bailey's uh, imagination. It's a real thing. Is being noted by scientists all across the world. So, yeah, thanks for bringing that up, Angel. It is a, an interesting point for consideration. Is there anybody else tonight? Any questions? Anybody here? I know it's a lot of material to think about, it, but the astrology works. And uh, we can use it as a pre predictive thing. Hi, David. Yeah. Uh, this is Christine. I was hi, Christine. wondering. Hi. I was wondering if you could perhaps uh, speak about Biden and uh, the future of uh, is he going to actually make it through the next few years? Uh, you know. Or not? Is he? He's, actually limited. He's limited by his health. Oh yes, yes, yes. I mean, that's, uh, but there's no disputing that. Does it indicate anything on his chart as to uh, uh, being ousted, so to speak, or? Um... <clears throat> Scorpio in the twelfth house. The twelfth house is the house. It represents many things, but he and Hillary have almost identical aspects in the 12th house, 12th house which imply self undoing. Ah, I can see that. And yeah. when it's Scorpio, it means that it comes instantly and fast and unexpected or out of the dark. It just happens. Just the fast is a, a scorpion stings you. It's ah. sudden. So whatever it is, it will be sudden. 
and uh, very abrupt. And uh, I could see that. I, I, and I don't... there's karma. There's karma. If you look at the karma aspect here, and it's 180 degrees, it's right across from all these planet, a stellium of planets in Scorpio, where whatever's going to happen to him will be very sudden. And, okay. Uh, so, well, that uh, would definitely know, sudden as far as a lifetime. What does that does that mean in a year? Two <laughs> years. Gosh, in I don't a know. lifetime. See, a lifetime to the soul is just a, a, a blink of an eye. Because you, you live hundreds and hundreds of lifetimes. You have yeah. hundreds and hundreds of different mothers and different fathers. Uh, and uh, so uh, one lifetime is is just a matter of a few minutes to the age of the soul. To the soul, yeah. Okay. You're a okay. million year institution. The soul is uh, normally takes about a million years to go through the involutionary, evolutionary process uh, to uh, perfection, becoming a fifth degree initiate. And uh, ah. So you're, you're a million year institution. But I'm going to try to find out in the future is, is I want to see if there's some way I can unravel the mystery of Biden's past lives. I'd, I'd kind of like to know that. That would be very, very interesting. Oh, and I had uh, Putin's, one of his past lives too. Very oh. interesting. Oh, that would be interesting as well. Yeah, maybe we'll talk about that. Okay, well, that sounds good. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Huh? Anybody else? See, we have people from all these different time zones. And so it's, uh, you know, it's two o'clock in the morning in uh, Bhutan or someplace like that, you know, yeah. Tibet or India. And in, in England, it's uh, midnight or one o'clock in the morning. So it's even later than that or earlier than that. And uh, I have a lot of people in India who uh, like to tune into these Zoom meetings. I don't know if we got anybody tonight or not, but uh, we've had some, some really great dedication from our Indian theosophists. Okay, well, that. How about uh, uh, somebody like President uh, Xi? Yeah. Can, uh, could, I mean, that's a very strange place, uh, China, yeah. and what's going on. And he seems like he's, you know, he's Trump's buddy and he's Biden's buddy. Mm -hmm. You know, where is he actually coming from? He's under pressure by the Chinese Communist Party. Yeah, that's another aspect. Here's, here's, here's a way to look at it. This is what Baker told me one time years ago. We were talking about World War II and the development of the atom bomb. And the original idea of the atom bomb was to use it on the Nazis. Mm -hmm. And there was hierarchical intervention that the spiritual hierarchy of our planet didn't want the atom bomb used on the Nazis. And so they influenced from the astral plane while the world leaders were, uh, while they slept, they're in their astral bodies. And uh, they influenced them to use the bomb on the Japanese and not to use it on the, the Germans. And so I said to Dr. Baker, a brilliant soul, I said, what was the rationale of that? And he said, because the Japanese were part of the fourth root race. I don't worry too much about the Chinese <laughs> because they're the fourth root race. The emphasis of the spiritual hierarchy in Shambhala 
really is on the, the continued evolution of the fifth root race, which is the Aryan race. We're a part of it. America is a part of the Anglo-Saxon subrace, the fifth subrace of the fifth root race. And uh, whatever's going to happen to China is going to happen to China. I, I believe that there'll be a massive uprising in China. To come into alignment with the uh, Western With world. the rest of the world, yeah. I see. see, it's a new age is coming. There's conflict everywhere. I just saw a thing today about uh, almost the entire country of Algeria shut down and they're protesting a corrupt government. Mm. <laughs> they're doing it in London, England. They get a million, two million people in London protesting. You don't hear anything on the news here. They, no. they suppress that. They don't want you to know. Yeah, I heard Lebanon is uh, starving and yeah. no fuel and they're collapsing. Mm -hmm. No yeah. mention. Yeah, fourth ray influence. Somebody said something here tonight. We were talking out there in the, one of the other rooms and they were talking about starvation in India. Was it somebody said something about starving in India? Gary did? Yeah. Did you? Yeah. Well, there's just a couple more questions, I think. Yeah. Um, okay. Angel, do you want to ask your question? Oh, thank you. Uh, David, I was curious. Um, on seeing a chart or a relationship in Mr. T's chart with his friendship with JFK Jr. there, they were very, very, very close friends. And I would love to see uh, maybe past associations and what you think about all that. Um, with regard to China, I wanna say to you, I agree wholeheartedly with you with regard to the fourth, um, sub ray um or Fourth sub race, race. Yeah. yeah root race um mind and mm -hmm. this is why uh, shadow has been able to use that race for a lot of this because uh of that level of mental uh development however i can tell you this you know we all know that mr t had created a space department, the sixth branch of the military, the Space Force, on the highest levels, China, Russia, and the US, along with two other countries, which I can't recall at the moment, are working in cooperation together. So like you said, we are stepping into a whole new level of life on this planet and a lot of other worldly beings are working, working with that Earth Alliance, clearing out the underground tunnels, clearing out a lot of stuff that's just too ugly to discuss here, but it's getting rid of all of the cabal and the dark energy, and we are gonna be liberated extremely soon. So this is all very good and exciting. Yeah, if the reality of 2025 is true, if that yeah. comes into fruition, which has been promised by the spiritual hierarchy of the planet, that the year 2025 will signal the beginning of a new world renaissance, it means that all the garbage and the cabals yes. of the world have to be destroyed before that can happen. And it won't and happen until they are destroyed. I always said for years that when I saw Trump, uh, to me, he was the harbinger of the fourth ray. He was bringing in fourth ray energy. And uh, it was one of the reasons why they hated him so much in DC because he knew how corrupt that place is. And uh, he was gonna destroy it and they had to get rid of him before he got rid of them. And, uh, well, and, and somehow or other, the, the the corruption of Washington D.C. probably through decentralized government and the fourth ray, as the and as the control is given back to the states and taken away from Washington D.C., then America will become a much more healthy 
uh, country than it presently is. And to your point, uh, you know, one of the things that the coming avatar, uh, the spiritual hierarchy is requiring that all this trafficking, all of that has to be put to an end. The sex so, trafficking, yeah, it's amazing yeah. because uh, Baker told me 12 years ago in a private conversation that the trafficking, sex trafficking, and pedophilia mm -hmm. that plagues the entire world, and Afghanistan is a good example of it, uh, it has to be cleaned up before we can have the new renaissance of 2025. Well, I can so tell you that that uh, Mr. T has known about this for a long time, long before he even got into office. He was oh, yeah, sure he, he was approached by certain people who were fed up with everything going on at the federal level and worldwide uh, arena. They brought him in because they knew that he would not be corrupted by money because he had enough of his own. And mm -hmm. they brought him in and uh, he has worked with... Um, uh, all the white hats, the earth alliance with the other worldly beings, and they have cleaned out almost a hundred percent of the underground dumps. So this is been going on for years and we are almost 100% free. Yeah, I hope so. It's a war between the forces of good and the forces of evil. Correct. That's what's happening. This is world war three. Alice Bailey said it would be fought in the clouds, which means it would be yes. fought in the airwaves. Television was almost non-existent when she was talking about these ideas. The computers didn't exist. The internet was non-existent. And that's what's happening. It's a tremendous yeah. battle of psychology. It's being fought out on television and the internet every day of our lives, along with just the corruption of the, the uh, pornography and the tra sex trafficking of children. They make videos that are 10 and 15 minutes long and they, they charge people four and $500 on the dark net to watch yeah. some child being abused. And they have millions of people to pay to watch this okay stuff. so Dave, we don't have a lot of time but i know paula wants to say something oh, okay. yeah. yeah paula uh paola. uh please uh please ask your question is she there she's here but i don't know why she can't she might have muted herself yeah, I did guess. She mute herself. Yeah, I think she did. And uh, yeah, so maybe she can't. Uh, let me let me see. So what was her question? I might be able to read you. This was the most interesting finding out that Joe has his Uranus in the seventh. And you said, David, was it? Oh boy, so do I. I don't, this station is getting better. Thank you very much. Yeah, his Uranus is in the sixth, but it's on the distal cusp. So it has influence in the seventh, seventh, seventh uh, house uh, energies. And it's uh, in Gemini, he's got this, Gemini in the seventh, which splits and divides. Mm -hmm. So he's, he's always trying to divide the country. Everything is a race issue or mm -hmm. it's a mask issue. It's, it's the flu issue. It's, it's all the issues. Yeah, no border problems. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no problem there. So it's 837. So hey Dave, do okay. you have yeah. more question about is uh, uh, Joe uh, Joe Biden and Hunter Biden, uh, they're Gemini, are they similar? No, uh, no, Joe Biden, Joe Biden is Sagittarian. Uh -huh. His Scorpio is his sun sign. 
No, no, I mean, uh, Hunter Biden is a similar horoscope. Oh, I don't know. I haven't done a horoscope. Oh. But there's a relationship in there between he and his father. Okay, so that's the apple doesn't fall far and, from the tree. Yeah, the apple doesn't fall. And then it's what I said about the morphology of the symbol of Uranus to the computer. That's a computer. That's the morphology. The symbols change and they morph and they become something like Libra or Libra is George Washington or Napoleon's hat. It's also the wheel opening of a car. Libra, Libra rules all of those things come fall under the sign of Libra. So David, what you're going to, what everyone is going to uh, learn very quickly here with regard to that laptop, uh, the trafficking uh, through not just that Asian country, but also Ukraine. And the whole reason why they are so upset with Mr. T, by the way, is that he is the one that's bringing in the new quantum banking system, which we are gonna learn about on a public scale worldwide scale very shortly and they are losing all their money and the whole thing in afghanistan was something that bush set up for heroin and so that's another thing that needs to be addressed before avatar can uh reappear is the drug trafficking also has to be you know the cartels have to be dismantled and he, that's what's happened in afghanistan they burned all the uh uh, opium fields over there. Just recently. Yeah, there's an interesting, I talked about it a couple of weeks ago, a relationship between Afghanistan growing heroin and their biggest customer is America. It's also significant that the Afghan people, uh, many esotericists believe, are the origin of the Aryan race. You see people in Afghanistan that look like Anglo-Saxons. They got blue eyes and green eyes and skin that's as white as mine. And, it's 8.40. Uh, yeah. Is that what time it is? Yes. Okay, we're going to have to close it down for tonight. So uh, tune in next week and we'll uh, maybe we'll pick up the conversation from where we left off. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Good night, all. Thank